Hey everybody, this is Bev Gray from Technique Tuesday. Now if you've been watching our videos, you've noticed that Tam Hess loves to use watercolors. And for this video, I asked her to make backgrounds that would look great for oceans or fish or things like that. But you can use these same techniques for a lot of different types of backgrounds. Now the stamp sets she's going to be using for this particular set of projects are Phyllis and Finn the fish and they're part of our Animal House collection and they've got both stamps and dies that coordinate with them. And then there's another smaller little stamp set called the small fry which are the little fish and they've got coordinating dies too. Now the first technique Tam's going to be doing is using a sponging technique. And depending on your watercolor paper, you may want to make it a little bit damp and just do a wash of color first. But you want it to be pretty dry compared to some of the other techniques. So Tam didn't wet it at all, she just started putting on some color. Now once Tam had all the color in the background laid down, she took a damp sea sponge and she picked up just a little bit of color with her paintbrush and then tapped it onto her sea sponge. And you want this color to have a little bit more contrast to it. Um, so she's using a blue there, a blue-green color, and putting that onto the sponge. And then she'll go ahead and just stamp it down, the sponge, da the sponge down onto the background. It kind of looks like some coral or some little creatures along the edges there. Now you can see that Tam has taped down the edges of the watercolor paper so that while it dries it won't curl. And you just set that aside, let it dry, and then you'll have backgrounds that look something like these. This one looks sort of like it might be some seagrass floating around in the ocean. And the other one with the pink could be some plankton or something else like that. And then she just added the small fry on top of the background. Now the next technique that Tam's going to be doing involves a crayon, and you can get these crayons from a couple different places. One is you can just pull out a regular old box of crayons and get the white crayon out and draw onto your project with the white crayon. Another place is from an Easter egg dyeing kit, where often they include something like that so you can decorate your eggs uh, and resist the dye on the eggs. And in this case, Tam is just drawing some waves across the card front and then dusting off any extra little wax pieces before she starts adding color. Now just like the last ones, you need to set aside your watercolor piece and let it dry. And then you can go and decorate it with fish, or you can do other things, like in this case, Tam made circles, and she's showing how you can add in some additional color inside of the shapes that you've drawn with the crayon to make them even pop even more. And don't be limited just by waves or circles. You can do things like draw stars for a special occasion. There's lots of different things that make sense to just hand draw onto that background and really make it personal. Now for the last technique, you're going to want to have a really wet piece of watercolor paper. This one just needs some extra water to really make it pop and, and go into a really cool pattern. So just like the rest of them, Tam's putting down color, although this time it is onto a wetter piece of watercolor paper. Now once Tam had all of her color onto the project, she took just a little bit of plain old table salt and sprinkled it down into the color. And what happens is as the salt interacts with the water, it kind of makes these blooms and it moves the, the color a little bit. So you get really cool patterns and every one that you make is unique. Now once the project has dried, you'll see that it has a lot of texture to the results and it has sort of these little crystals that are still there that, that give it even more interest. It almost in some cases acts like glitter where you've got a little bit of sparkle to the project. I hope you enjoyed seeing how Tam made these great backgrounds for her projects and I hope you'll find ways to use these on your projects too. You'll find more project ideas like these on our Facebook page and Pinterest boards Plus, we're going to be making more technique videos, so sign up for our newsletters 